So in this video, we're going to do an example of solving a BJT circuit. And so we're just going to use this simple BJT circuit. So we've got a single resistor up top. We've got a resistor down below. And we're going to bias this with some voltage at the base. Let's call this VB. So this is VCC. Uh, let's call this RC for the collector resistor and RE. And let's say for this problem that RC and RE are equal to each other and they're both equal to one kilo ohm. Let's say that VB is 1.5 volts and VCC is, I don't know, 3.3 .3 volts. Okay, and uh, we want to know, we want to say uh, find IC. So find this collector current here. And we're also going to assume that beta is much, much bigger than 1. So we're going to essentially neglect uh, the any base current. So we're going to just, that's the same as saying that the base current is equal to 0. Okay, so how do we actually solve this circuit? Well, we need, we need one more piece of information. Uh, we either need, if we want to solve the circuit exactly, we need IS, or the reverse saturation current density. If we want to solve the circuit approximately, then we need a value for VBE on. In other words, we need some constant value uh, that we're going to assume for VBE on. And this is usually the way that you'll solve BJT circuits, although sometimes you might need to solve them more exactly. Um, and if you do want uh, a more exact solution, then you can use IS instead of VBE. So let's say in this case, uh, VBE on is just equal to 0.7 volts. Okay, so how do we actually go about solving this then? Well, uh, this voltage here is VBE, so we just assume that this is equal to 0.7 volts. And so we know almost everything we need to know about this circuit, so I'm just going to erase some of this real quick. Or we know everything that we need to know. So since VBE is equal to 0.7 volts and VB is equal to 1.5 volts, then we know that the voltage here is just the voltage here minus VBE. So this is 1.5 volts minus 0.7 volts, which is 0.8 volts. And so we know that the current, since this is just a simple resistor, uh, the current flowing through this resistor RE must just be equal to 0.8 volts divided by RE, or in this case is one kilo ohm. And so we get 0.8 milliamps. And since we're assuming that beta is much, much greater than one, then the base current is zero and the current flowing through this collector is exactly the same, 0.8 milliamps. Awesome. Uh, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, or rather, it was a small number of steps, not necessarily straightforward if you don't know what to do. But the general procedure is just um, assume a value for VBE. So in this case, we used 0.7 volts. And then you solve for everything else. So you solve for the currents. And you can do this with a finite beta, uh, but we're not going to do that in this video just because it's going to overcomplicate things. Um, now, what if, uh, what if we wanted to solve the circuit exactly? So instead of VBE, instead of assuming some value for VBE, what if we wanted to find what it was exactly? Um, and I say exactly sort of in air quotes because there's a lot of approximations we've used to get to this point uh, in the first place. So that's perhaps, uh, that, that's the primary reason that we don't generally want this additional accuracy. Uh, but we know that the collector current is related to VBE through this exponential relationship. So VBE divided by phi t, where phi t is just convenient notation for the thermal voltage, kT over Q, or at room temperature, uh, 0.026 volts or 26 millivolts. Well, okay, so how do we solve this circuit? Well, uh, first we need IS, so let's assume that you're given IS. Let's say that IS is two femtoamps. So that's two times 10 to the minus 15 amps. Okay, so how do we solve this circuit? Well, we do exactly the same thing we did before. 
except, except uh, now instead of assuming a value of VB, we have to solve for it. So to do that, uh, we're just going to set up a, an equation. We're going to say that VB minus VBE, uh, so this voltage here, this voltage at the emitter, uh, must be equal to uh, whatever current is flowing through here. So IE, although uh, since we're going to assume beta is much, much greater than 1 again, then the same current IC is flowing through both this top part and this bottom part. So this is equal to IC times RE. And that's just a way of expressing that the voltage VE is equal to itself. So VE is equal to VE. We just have two different expressions for it. One we got implicitly using KVL and one we got using just the voltage drop across a resistor. So voltage drop across RE. And we also know we have a relationship for IC as a function of VBE that's just up here. So if we know that IC is just equal to IS times e to the VBE over phi t, then we can just rewrite this equation as VB minus VBE is equal to IS times E to the VBE over phi T times RE. And now what do we do? Well, we've, we've got this equation and unfortunately this is a transcendental equation and it has no analytic form. So it's got no analytic solution to it. And that's we, we really don't like that in general. So we actually have to solve this equation numerically. And we can't even tailor expand it. Uh, we can't tailor expand it unless we're, we get really creative with the algebra. Because VBE over phi t is much, much bigger than 1. Now you could get creative and, and, and tailor expand, but we're not, we're not going to do that here. So if you actually solve this, if you solve this transcendental equation in your calculator or in some other numerical software, uh, for VB is 1.5 volts, IS is 2 femtoamps, and RE is, what do we say, 1 kilo ohm, you will get that VBE is equal to 0 0.694 volts. And you'll get that IC is equal to 0 0.807 milliamps. Now compare this to the result that we got previously, the result from just approximating uh, VBE, from just guessing VBE essentially. We got IC was equal to 0 0.8 milliamps and VBE was equal to 0 0.7 volts. Now this is really close, like for a, for a gross approximation, um, this is incredibly close to, to the correct answer. And that's because if you choose VBE, if you guess VBE correctly, uh, so if you guess VBE well, then your result will have very low error. And typically your instructor is going to be guessing VBE for you. Um, it's typically going to be in the range of 0.5 to 0.7 volts. And the reason we can usually get away with this is that for large variations in IC, so let's say we, we're pretty sure that our circuit has IC somewhere between 1 milliamp and 100 microamps. If we guess a VBE that corresponds to an IC of 1 milliamp, so a real IC of, an actual IC of 1 milliamp, not an approximate one, uh, then this exponential relationship, uh, the exponential dependence on VBE so VBE over phi t. Um, this exponential dependence means that VBE does not change much. Even for large deviations in IC. So as long as we guess, as long as we guess VBE on, reasonably well, we're going to have reasonably small error. And so, for example, in the problem above, if you were to redo it, uh, and you said instead that VB was equal to 1 volt, you'll get something like 8% error, where previously we got 1% error. And this comes from the choice of VBE on. 
this means that our choice of VB on was not perfect. And so that's sort of uh, where this whole use of VBE on uh, equals some constant, say 0.7 volts, comes from. And th the reason that we want to use this to solve BJT circuits is that we generally incur very little error. So maybe between 1% to 10% error in our guess of the bias point. And for a first pass hand calculation, that's fantastic. Like if we can save, um, if we can save having to do a numerical calculation, like a, a numerical solution to a problem on our computer, then that's that's amazing. Um, and to only incur this very small amount of error. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like, uh, comment below, and I'll see you next time.